We can't really talk about GPT-5 without talking about pricing first. For reference, this is what we're looking at in terms of how pricing evolved and compared to other models. If you look at the chart, OpenAI essentially consolidated their pricing to $1.25. In comparison, GPT-40 was $2.50, GPT-4.1 was $2, O3 was $2, and O4 Mini was $1.10. For further comparison, here are the pricing for Claude and Gemini. Most notably, Claude Opus 4.1 at $15 and Gemini 2.0. 5 Pro at $1.25 to $2.50. So basically, OpenAI matched Gemini's current pricing while delivering on what they deemed as the best model they ever put forward. Now, whether GBT5 is truly as great as they say it is, I think pricing is quite generous given that API usage of GPT-5 will most likely be coding-related tasks. And coding-related tasks typically require a model that's at least at the level of GPT-4.1. So even if GPT-5 model is only as good as a GPT-4.1, we're practically spending half as much as we used to. Which brings me to the next point. The pricing announced by OpenAI for GPT-5 is a huge affirmation that the large language model is now a commodity business, which means you're going to see very little difference in pricing from other companies like Anthropic, Gemini, and XAI. We know that the cost of inference has been going down for some time, and the fact that GPT-5 is 7 to 10 times cheaper than the Opus 4.1 and kept the same pricing as Gemini 2.5 Pro seems to indicate that the path to $0 for inference costs is coming very soon. For example, it's rumored that OpenAI spent $500 million dollars to train the GPT-5 model. In comparison, Kimi K2 cost Moonshot around $30 million to train their flagship model. That's like a gold mining company that spent $500 million to extract gold and selling it at the market for $1.25 per milligram of gold. Well, Moonshot spent $30 million, which is significantly less than what OpenAI spent and is selling for $0.15 cents per milligram of gold. Now, compared to OpenAI, the quality of gold may not be as, say, 65% pure gold in benchmark as opposed to 49% pure gold, to the average person, the difference between a 65% pure gold to a 49% pure gold could be indistinguishable. So spending the extra $1.10 per milligram of gold to use GPT-5 will start to make less sense. However, OpenAI has the advantage of having a big marketplace in their favor where people are willing to buy from them, while the Chinese counterparts are still having a hard time setting up shop and creating their own marketplace that people can buy gold from. But the main point here in terms of pricing is that the cost is going to get to zero dollars because the cost to extract gold is becoming more and more insignificant for companies that are worth hundreds of billion dollars like OpenAI. Now let's talk about performance. Unsurprisingly, GPT-5 beat almost everyone in almost every benchmark except for Arc AGI, which is still held by Grok4. As far as public reception of the GPT-5, it has been pretty split in the middle. In my previous video where I talked about what expectations I have toward GPT-5's release, I made a claim that if GPT-5 doesn't create enough of a lead in their performance, it's likely going to be the beginning of the end for them. And that's not to be so critical towards OpenAI, but rather it's the fact that OpenAI is deemed as the leader in the AI industry. And meanwhile, the Chinese flagship models are not only being released practically every quarter, they're releasing them completely open and cheaper and faster. With the release of GPT-5, I think OpenAI bought themselves maybe one or two weeks until the new cycle moved on to more exciting news from Grok, Gemini, Anthropic, and other Chinese models. And let's not forget about what Meta is cooking with their new super team. On a personal level, I think unifying all models into GPT-5 might not have been the best strategy long term. They certainly gain attention by consolidating all their flagship models into one, but as easily as people can now select one model to choose from, people can now also compare one model to other competing models as well. GPT-40 was a good conversationalist, O3 was really good at reasoning, GPT-4.1 was good at coding, and they all had their own unique strength, meaning that they serve their own niche that people can choose and compare with. But now, GPT-5 needs to live up to the name of being a foundation model, which means general purpose model that essentially can do anything that comes their way. So now tying pricing and performance together, my next point is this. Historically, the cost to train models has been expensive, but as the cost gets lower, I would imagine that having specialized models would also be far more effective. Similar to buying a Lamborghini if I wanted to drive fast, a Jeep if I wanted to go off-roading, or an Audi if I wanted just an all-around good driving experience. Now, if unifying all OpenAI models into one brought a significant improvement in performance, I think it totally makes sense to justify since new high score is being met. But the fact that it's a minor improvement over other existing models seems like a limiting factor than an improvement. Okay, what about the good things? What technical advancements did GPT-5 make? Here are a few improvements 
improvements that OpenAI made with GPT-5. Lower hallucination, better taste, and eagerness to get the job done. One of the biggest complaints about previous models from OpenAI was how much it hallucinated when it came to getting the facts right. And GPT-5's reduction in hallucination is certainly an underlooked improvement that's always good to see as a user. GPT-5 saw 45% reduction in hallucination compared to the gpt 40 and 80% less errors compared to the O3 model when it's on the thinking mode. Another underlooked metric is taste, especially when it comes to front-end applications. I typically use V0 lovable and bolt for most front-end bootstrapping, but GPT-5 definitely showed comparable if not better taste when it comes to front-end design, which isn't something that we can easily measure in a metric, but certainly a worthwhile advancement in its soft skills. And finally, it's eagerness, which is another soft skill that's kind of hard to measure, but the closest one being METR's benchmark that measures the AI's capability of completing long, complex tasks. GPT-5 scored the highest in this benchmark, and as agentic coding becomes the norm, this is certainly a good trend that GPT-5 is charting. So with these three improvements paired with lower pricing certainly makes this release by OpenAI a headline worthy news. My honest opinion is that GPT-5 didn't create enough of a lead as a leader in this space. And honestly, unifying them to squeeze out a few improvements just feels like it was more of a cost saving move than setting a trend as a leader in AI. That's not to say OpenAI's complete dominance, especially in the chat industry, isn't impressive. But as far as large language model innovation is concerned, I think the release of GPT-5 is a strong indicator that OpenAI is about to be surpassed by other competing companies.